The Lexus LBX just got announced. And what does LBX stand for? Well, Lexus Breakthrough X. X meaning crossover. In this video, I will review the new LBX that Americas will never get. They do say that the all new compact SUV promises a new market breakthrough for Lexus. It's designed and engineered with a focus on European customers. And now let's put your seatbelts on and have a look at the new LBX. Hey, it's LSFT here today, and today we're here to look at the smallest Lexus you can buy. Well, you can buy in Europe or Oceania, and I'm not sure if you can get this in Asia yet or not, but definitely this is not available in North America. So, with that being said, in the introduction, the LBX stands for Lexus Breakthrough Crossover. And this is the second time Lexus has used three letter naming for any vehicle. The first one was the supercar, the LFA. And the LFA did not have any trims like the LFA 800 or whatever. And this is the same with the LBX. There is no numeric numbering beside the LBX. It's just called the Lexus LBX. So the LBX is also a breakthrough for Lexus. As a business in Europe, this is the first time Europe has led the development of this new Lexus, and it seems like they are thinking that the LBX will be the best seller vehicle for the brand in Europe. This is similar to the RX being the best seller in Americas for Lexus brand. The LBX sits under the UX, and this is a new entry point for the XUV lineup that they have. Globally, there, there will be many SUV models offered in different regions, and there's a total of seven SUVs, where the GX and the LX remains body-on-frame SUVs for off-roading. So really, we have the LBX, then we have the little bit larger UX, then we have the NX, then we have the RX, and then we have the TX which will not be available in certain markets, and we'll have the new GX that it's coming, and we have the larger LX. So that is a very large SUV lineup for one brand. All right, so now let's look at the styling for the LBX. The LBX looks a bit different when you look at the, Lex the new Lexus design of the spindle body. But when you look at it, you actually recognize that this is a Lexus and it's not another brand, but there are some major differences here. So in the press release of this LBX, they actually said that they put in air quotes that they will break the spindle grille design, which I think Lexus was always on their way of changing it anyways. So I think the design direction has always been shown in the electric des uh, vehicle designs when they released it in 2021. You notice here that the Lexus album is no longer on the grill. They have it on the hood and no longer having that black or the blue and I think there's no more purpose of that. So now they've moved it back onto the hood. And you can see also extremely slim headlights. So the design is definitely different. What I feel is what they've done is they've actually smashed the spindle body and the Prius design in together to get this new design. And Lexus calls this like the resolute design. and it, they actually took the design from design cues of the 20, 2003 LFS concept that they've actually released. And the LFS concept was actually taken and used in Lexus vehicles around the 2000 era. So it looks like what they're doing is they're going backwards and going back to the older design so that they can actually like get the older generation to like the design and not make it as pronounced as the spindle grill and now we have the spindle grill the spindle body and this whole uh, older LFS concept smash it together to get a new design and looking at it I actually think it's not too bad it, it I do miss that spindle type but it's still there so when you see here I still see that spindle body here 
like that spindle grill design is still in this design as well but then they smash that Prius uh, new Toyota design together on top and making it a new design and you can see here we have the hood there's a gap here and then we have this light headlights here it does look nice it does look a little bit different and I like how they've treated this, the radar cruise control, and not just having a piece of plastic on top of the grill. They've thought of it, they've designed it, and it does look a little bit better. I noticed that the camera is actually not below it, it's actually on the side, which is a little bit interesting. So there is no frame. This is actually a seamless and frameless grill, and it generates lines, which makes it have a strong and dynamic look. And they're saying that it's actually very aerodynamic efficient as well. I haven't seen any drag coefficient numbers here, but I think it does look like they've took those considerations and the drag coefficient should be quite good. And when you look at the new headlights, so the new headlights here, when you look at it, it definitely looks a little bit different, right? It doesn't have the signature like the L signature this way, but it actually has it backwards. And they purposely did that. It's quite interesting. So the daylight running, these are the daylight running lights and the indicators, and there's a by LED here. And I haven't seen a lot of more information here. It does look a little bit different, but overall, I would say the design still looks Lexus. And when you scroll down here, I also see that there's a cornering light and there's fog lights. So definitely this design is, I would say, very Lexus design and a little bit of the Toyota design here as well. So we can see that we have the sensors, the parking sensors are still here. We have some intake, air intakes here. And let's scroll down here and see, you see. So we see there's more parking. So this would have advanced park based on what I'm seeing here. This, this sensor is used for the advanced park. I also see here that it has equipped with Michelin tires and it does look like these are 18 tires, 225, 55, 18. So let's scroll and look at a little bit more of this design here. So I actually like this side mirror. It doesn't have much of a chrome. It does look much better, but there is a chrome edge here. Let's see what else we see here. We do see that we have an e-latch system. Okay, and this is all blacked out. So this does look like a two-tone blackout roof. It's all black. And I also see on here they have very strong lines on the hood. And then if you go up to the top of the, of the roof, you also have those two lines as well. All right, it does look like there's heads-up display as well. All right, so that's overall what the LBX design looks like. I, it looks like they have two-tone of the arches here. We have the black arches, and then we also have body-colored arch here. All right, it does look like a much smaller vehicle. And I'm surprised that they didn't have the door handles on the on the top, similar to the new vehicle that they just released on the Toyota side. Um, but I guess this looks much better. All right, now we flipped over to the back. So you can see those two long lines on the roof and it goes up to the back. And then we see we do have a wiper on the back. The window is quite small. And then we look at I'm surprised that to see that this, this is actually spelled out Lexus this way. So this looks exactly like the NX and the LX Lexus because I thought that they would actually integrate with the black uh, light bar strip similar to the RX and I, I think the TX is going to look like that and the GX also looks like that. And this one they actually put it in as letters spelled out on, on, the, on the lift back which is interesting because uh, the LX and the NX felt like it was an afterthought. They actually had the Lexus logo there and then they said, oh, we're changing our design to Lex spell out Lexus. So then they just put it in there. But now this one does show that maybe I was wrong. They, they actually have two types of design. 
One is on the light bar and one is spelled like this. Or maybe this was actually designed back then already like, like this and they actually had to do the same thing. Anyways, but it looks actually better. I think it does look better than having Lexus spelled here because it looks very plain. There's not much design here. And we can see that the signature light bar, which is not a, st a straight strip, they actually do have some design here, which is looks really perfect here. Um, we can see here, this is where the opening is. I'm not sure if this will actually get an electric uh, lift back. Maybe it'll be manual, don't know. And the camera is actually quite low. I'm quite surprised it's quite low on onto the floor because typically the Lexus uh, cameras are actually up here. So the overall design is still very Lexus design. Um, I actually like this over the UX in design. Um, I'm assuming these airflow probably are fake. They're just design elements. And so this one is a hybrid. Uh, we definitely know that as a hybrid. And I'm just trying to see, I do see, it looks like there's an exhaust out here. Um, it does look like it's a little bit visible. So it's not something that's been hidden in the traditional Lexus design. So that looks a little bit different. I'm not sure is just the angle or there is purposely an exhaust to be shown. Okay, now looking at the measurements. The wheelbase is 2,580 millimeters and that's actually not too bad. With the car being 4,190 millimeters in total length and we have a height of 1560 millimeters and one thing I wanted to do was compare this with the CT the CT was also very compact as well already right so let's have a look and see what the comparison is so when you look at the CT the CT wheelbase was actually 20 millimeters longer not that much longer but overall the car itself is much smaller uh, the LBX is like 200 or actually 100 and something millimeters shorter. The CT was actually a much larger vehicle itself. But from a height perspective, the LBX is much higher, 1560 compared to the 1440. So when you look at cabin space, it's about 20 millimeters different, so about 2 cm different. So maybe we may not see the difference in comfort, um, in the seating positions and all that, because it's only two centimeters, so less than an inch, um, but sometimes that one inch can make a big difference. And now moving over to just the side view, you can see right now the width of the car is 1825 millimeters. Um, the height is the same, it's 1560, and if we compare that to the CT, let's have a look at that. The, it, the LBX is actually a wider vehicle, a much wider vehicle as well because that's about 60 millimeters wider in total. So meaning the seat distances should be a little bit better. Uh, the shoulder to shoulder uh, width would be better. And the height wise, again, for taller um, owners, probably it would be better as well. So overall, if, you, if you're a CT owner looking at the LBX, maybe that could be a good thing to look at um, because dimension wise, it's not too far off. The car itself is shorter, but overall, wheelbase is not too far away. The LBX is built on the TNGAB platform, and similar vehicles on this platform is like the Toyota Yaris, or their closest cousin, the Toyota Yaris Cross. But this can't be a Lexus if the whole car is similar to the Yaris Cross, right? They are, they've actually made some fundamental adjustments made to the TNGB platform to meet the Lexus requirements. The body is strengthened with structural adhesives and strong and short pitch weldings and added braces and reinforcements in certain parts of the car to ensure that it meets the Lexus driving signature. And at the same time, the vehicle weight is kept down so that it uses lightweight materials. An example of that is the hood is actually made of aluminum and suspensions are McPherson struts and the front wheel drive models are getting a rear torsion beam and the all wheel drive models are actually getting a double wishbone arrangement. So you know that they will have an LBX front wheel drive and an LBX all wheel drive. 
Another feature that they include in the LPX is electronic controlled braking system, which can also control braking posture. It will actually balance out the front and rear brake distribution so that it can suppress and maintain a linear braking performance so that you would not be pitching forward when you actually slam on the brakes. This also helps the vehicle the, from rolling when cornering and it remains comfortable and stable and it will actually also filter out any vibrations so that it can keep it at the Lexus standard. Now let's look at the hybrid drive. So this is a new generation hybrid system that was never used in the Lexus. They are actually using a 1.5 liter three cylinder engine. They also said that they redesigned the hybrid components to become more efficient and to reduce energy loss, weight and size. This new generation system allows Lexus to focus on the rewarding performance and driving pleasure, which was not possible in the previous generation of the hybrid systems. The max output of the LBX is 134 brake horsepower with a peak torque of 185 nanometers, which is equivalent to 136 pound feet of torque. So when you look at the Yaris Cross engine, it is the M15A FXE, which has a thermal efficiency of 41%. From the battery side, because this is a hybrid, right? It's using an all new bipolar nickel metal hydrate battery, which reduces weight and size so that it can give you quicker response. And it doesn't seem like they provided any of the performance numbers like the zero to 60 numbers. Uh, we'll probably have to wait and see that information. But you know, as with the batteries and smaller engines, one thing that we've all talked about is the NX is uh, the vibrations and the noise is just so much, right? So that's one thing that we may be concerned about, the noise and vibrations. So it seems like they've actually know that they have to deal, deal with it. So what have they done? So they said that they've included a balancer shaft to the engine that will help reduce vibrations and they've actually added damping sheets to the doors to suppress any high frequency noise and they've also done additional insulation to the roof, the hood and under the vehicle to help reduce any noise and vibrations. I won't be able to test drive this as I wouldn't know that is this effective or not but I'm hoping one day I will see other reviews in Europe or Australia to see if this is actually effective or not. Now we're, look, we're going to look at some highlights of the features of the LBX. So they will actually offer semi airline leather, which is the top trim ones, but then they also have vegan friendly features like the synthetic leather, which is the ones that we see on a lot of the other Lexus vehicles as well. Ambient lighting is also looked at again. I'm hoping this one is brighter than other vehicles that they have, but they say that they offer 50 color options in this one. And based on the Tazuna concept, the steering wheel position, similar to the NX, the RX that actually uses this concept. And now instead of having the seven inch digital instrument, they're having the full 12.3 inch digital instrument, which we have never seen on a Lexus. We've seen it on the RAV4 and now it's coming to the LBX. And then we look at the center console. The infotainment screen is, because the, the car is smaller, you're not gonna put a 14 inch on this car. So they have the standard 9.8 touchscreen, which offers wireless CarPlay, wired CarPlay as well, as well, and wired Android Auto. So it seems like they still have this licensing issue with Google and they cannot offer wireless Android Auto. Don't know why. They also have the digital key, which will be offered uh, as an option. There is a Mark Levinson system which offers 13 speakers and one thing that will be different. They will not have premium luxury or executive trims or I don't even see an F Sport trim. They're using atmosphere names to name their trims. So in the UK, at least what I've seen is they have elegant, relax, emotional and cool as their trims. Emotion and cool are the ones that are the sportier versions which have a bi-tone paint tone paintwork and 18 inch alloy wheels with the elegant and relaxed having the single tone color and you can have an option of a 17 or 18 wheel option for the wheels 
And then when we look at the safety of the systems, it will be having the latest generation of LSS Plus. And I, I believe it's LSS Plus 3.0. So it does include things like the pre-collision system with intersection turn assist, dynamic radar cruise control, lane tracing assist, lane keep assist, road sign assist, and they also have items like the safe, the safe exit assist and also a driver monitor, intelligent parking sensors with auto braking, rear cross traffic alert, and blind spot monitoring. And there are going to be extended safety packages that will be available, so probably they'll have offer other features to the LBX as well as an option. So one thing that we have never seen on other Lexus other than the LC and the LS, and that is what they called the wet arm wiper. So this actually distributes the washer fluid onto the wiper itself rather than on the windshield. So this will be better when you start wiping. This is something that you'll get in the LBX, which you don't get on the UX, NX, RX, and all the other Xs, right? Maybe the GX will have it, I don't know. But at this point, LBX will be getting this feature as well. So when are we going to be getting this? Okay, so Americas are not going to get it, so we'll never get it. But people in UK, Europe and all that, so it looks like that it's going to go into production late 2023. And they're going to, in UK, they're actually going to start the reservation system around July timeframe. And pricing will be confirmed again, probably around October timeframe and they're looking at the first deliveries in March 2024. So this definitely will be a 2024 Lexus LBX. There is not a lot of information on the size of the trunk, but they only have mentioned that the front wheel drive model will have 332 liters of space. And if you make a comparison here, the CT had 375 liters. So it is still a little bit under what the CT has. But then you also compare it to the UX, which is one step higher, you have 438 liters. So it is a smaller trunk, but then definitely much better than the LC, which is 132 liters. So one thing I would say is if you don't use the rear seats and you put them down, you probably would have enough space. But 332 versus the 375 on the CT, I would say it's good for day-to-day -day grocery shopping and all that, but not really for hauling big things. And I think that's one reason why the LBX is not available in the Americas, because we will say that the trunk is just too small. So my final thoughts on the all-new LBX. I think this is a great entry car for many of the younger potential buyers. This is definitely designed for them to enter into the brand. The 1.5 liter 3 cylinder engine with the hybrid powertrain would be enough for many in Europe and countries where smaller vehicles are great to be in. It would be nimble and easy to drive. My only concern is vibration and noise, but again, I wouldn't know until that first drive is actually happening, but unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to drive it unless I fly to Europe to just test drive, which is quite unlikely. It's even a great car for you to go to work and have good fuel efficiency with uh, such a nice looking car. And if it comes to Canada, I definitely will test drive it and I think it actually will work because there is Yaris in Canada, but people have bigger SUVs and I think that's where a lot of people are looking for bigger cars because they're scared of driving beside a humongous SUV. But then when you look at it, the more I look at this car, the more I like the looks. I feel that it looks much better than the current Spindle Body RX with the Spindle Body. What do you think? Do you think the looks are better than the RX? If I compare it to the NX, this one will be hard to pick. I still like the F-Sport design, but I think if the NX becomes a grown-up version of the LBX, I think I would be fine with the the design. It is equipped with most of the current Lexus technologies with all the safety systems and it also offers the Mark Levinson sound system and all the tech features you may need. Unfortunately, there is no wireless Android Auto in Europe and I didn't see a Qi wireless charger. But if the charger was like the NX one, Lexus, you can actually skip that. 
This is Lux's first entry to the B segment, and I think this could be a winner, as long as it's priced correctly. Car prices have been going up a lot, and if this is for the younger crew, pricing needs to be just right. I hope you enjoy the first look at the LBX, and make sure you leave your impressions in the comments below. And until next time, drive safely.
Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please comment, like, and share this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and press that alert button to get notified when new videos are posted. If you'd like to support the channel, you can definitely provide a super thanks. I'll see you guys again next time in the next video.